All right, so what we have here today is uh, the DOL-001 Nintendo GameCube. Uh, it's got a laser that's not reading the disc correctly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and pot tweak it. So first thing you're gonna need here is uh, just a little precision screwdriver Phillips. Second is a little 4.5 millimeter bit, the security bit to take off the four screws on the bottom of here. Um, because everybody knows Nintendo uses security bits for their consoles. So I already have the screws taken out, but um, just sit down here in the holes, all four. Once that's done, go ahead and flip it over, and uh, the top comes right off of it. The faceplate lifts up out of there. The ribbon cable disconnects. The back piece back here also lifts right out. And um, so here's what we're left with. Now, there's one, two, three, four, five screws on the side. There are four screws across the back, and then there's another five down the other side. Two of those are actually holding in the fan and the uh, power board. So let's go ahead, remove one. Alrighty, so those five are removed. We'll move over to the back. Now, we're only going to be able to get to three right now. So we will take out these uh, first three. The reason being is because the fourth one is actually directly underneath the uh, power supply plug-in. So... Right under here pick it up actually can't get to it so there's two screws holding the fan down so remember when you go to put this side back together that uh, the middle screws are what's gonna go back in to hold the uh, main shrouding down and the other two will be for the fan well fan slash power board so that one out of there now the wires slide out right there, and then disconnect. All right, so now we can get to this back screw that we had to skip. And yes, it is uh, quite, quite a bit of screws just to get to this damn pot, so. Alrighty, so we should now have, including the four from the outer shell, have already removed 18 screws. And then these four up front, which just undo uh, one and then leave it there and then undo the other. Because if you just grab this little metal shroud piece that uh, <coughs> holds the case up, doesn't really hold it up, but kind of holds it in place a little better uh, when it's sitting down, the face, oh, the face plate actually. Um, yeah, it just pulls right out of there. Alrighty. And uh, it actually just plugs right into the motherboard there. This is the whole disc, um, disc bay. So that can get set out of the way. The top case can get set out of the way. And now here's what we're left with. So now there's six screws on the bottom of this we also need to take off. So. gonna let that rest on something so the laser is not touching anything take out one oops they are pretty small screws so but on the plus side these are the last screws we have to take out to do the uh, the pot tweak so all in all there's gonna be uh, <laughs> 28 screws that you have to remove. The plus side is um, there's only three different sizes of screw so well again if you count the outside screws four but uh, you should know where they all go fairly well. Alright so now that lifts right up out of there. Now what I like to do 
set that down there. And then if you put it the long way here, so that the ribbon cable, the brown ribbon cable, and the power plug for the laser, well actually no, never mind, that's for the um, the little drive mechanism there. Um, have it facing towards you on this because it won't go anywhere. See that? It's not moving when you push on it. So you're going to get a good read and you're not going to slide it out of the way and smash into the laser or anything like that. <clears throat> Alright, so now let's go ahead and uh, adjust our multimeter to ohms. <clears throat> and again, if, uh, if you have it facing the way that I have it, um, we're going to be turning it counterclockwise to, uh, to adjust the laser. So um, depending on which way you're looking at it, this would be the bottom of the board. So I guess I'm looking at it from the left side being the bottom. And you're going to look for the side right over here. Oh, that camera is really far away, huh? Give me one second here. I'm trying to move stuff out of the way. So I got uh, another Nintendo I got to do up here, so. That's a lot better, yes. Okay, so. That is our pot. You're going to be able to see it fairly easy. It's the only thing that looks like a potentiometer. <laughs> so, um, yeah. There's two test leads on this side, and then there's one on this side. We want to go across the two and see what we're reading at. It's going to be set anywhere between 600 to 150. Now, once you get to 150, it's not going to go any lower than that. It may say it'll go lower on here, but it's not because the other resistor, there's actually, there's two resistors. There's a fixed resistor set to 150 ohms, and then there's this potentiometer, which acts as a resistor, um, you know, so you can tune that. But anyways, like I said, they're going to be set between 150 and 600. So let's go ahead. We're going to get down here and test and see if I can get my test leads in there. This uh, negative is a little bent, so... What are we sitting at? We are sitting at 406. So let's go ahead and just twist it a hair. Three forty. You want to go a little, little, little lower than that. Want to get around 200 or so, I think would be the best for this because uh, 400 is a little low. 208, I'll take it. Perfect. Alrighty, so that's really all we had to do. All the taking out that screw is just to do 30 seconds of tweaking this. Um, you really don't want to do it without a potentiometer, or not a potentiometer, sorry, um, an ohm meter, multimeter, whatever. Uh, you don't want to do it blind. Um, I mean, gr you know, granted, your laser is already garbage, it's already shot technically, it's not reading. Um, you have a much, much better chance of recovering it if you use a multimeter. Um, what I'm using here is a, it's a fluke meter. It's a pretty decent one. I had to have it for heating and air conditioning. So, um, yeah, you can pick up a cheapy $20 one from Walmart that'll do you just fine. Um, not sure why they made us order such an expensive one, but hey, it works. It works great. So, let's go ahead, pick this bad boy up, set that right back down on top. Now there are going to be two little plastic prongs that are going to have to fit inside the holes there. Alright, so now that that's done, Now for the time being and purpose of this video, because uh, what are we at right now? Nine minutes? Yeah, I don't want to make this any, any longer. You guys saw how to tear it down. Watch it backwards. It'll show you how to put it together. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to tack this down with three screws. And then we'll throw it back on the main. And uh, plug it in and test it. Alrighty. Alright, so that's set. We don't even need the back on it, actually, so that'll uh, 
Well, I don't for this video. Obviously, you're going to want to put it back on, but purpose of the video, I'm not putting it on. This is literally all I'm doing here. <laughs> Calling it good. Well, I guess the faceplate too, huh? Probably need that. Now, if you have big hands, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get this to sit in there, but if I can manage to get it, any of you guys can. That is a pain in the ass. Get a little closer to me. You guys can see where it goes already, so. <laughs> All right, where did my power cord go? Here we are. Now, I'm not going to focus the camera on the screen, so but I'll be able to see if it works or not. Where did my disc go? Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Dumbass spot to put it. All right. Sorry about that, guys. It's a complete mess down here. I have so much to do this week. I don't know if you can see. Right off in the corner, right about... Where's my finger? Right here. The red right there. Right here. Yeah, I just finished up a custom Xbox. One sitting underneath it. Two jailbroken PS3s. Now this GameCube and then another GameCube and then another PS3 and uh, regular Nintendo. So <laughs> it's going to be a fun night. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and test it out. Licensed by Nintendo. Over the hedge. So, I would call this a success. It's working perfect. Yeah. So, um, like I said, 150 to 600 ohms should uh, should do you right. Um, and yeah, I don't know why I was still holding the power button. <laughs> But there you guys go. That is the video. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. You guys all know how to get it put back together. So uh, if it worked for you, congratulations. If not, uh, as soon as I get a broken GameCube with a uh, completely dead laser, I'll do a replacement video, which actually might be on this next one. It works, but it takes like 15 minutes to kick on, apparently. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, gonna go ahead and stop the video guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you need any help, any, anything you messed up or, uh, any other issues you're having, don't, you know, don't hesitate to shoot me a comment or just directly message me, post in the discussion. I don't care, but like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.